jetsam and jetsam, the garbage of the streets. They throw them a holy book and they give them a robe and they think suddenly that their life of being a junkie and a rapist is behind them. And they bring them to the Middle East and they give them the mumbo jumbo and the next thing you know is they throw them a girl and they think that they're in heaven already. They're not waiting for the virgins in the next world. They're raping them in this world. They're the worst scourge the world has seen since Hitler. And it's not Russia. It's ISIS. And believe me, Iran and Russia have self-interest in destroying ISIS. Put aside Assad for a minute. I don't know why you have such a mania, many of you, of hating Assad. As bad as he is, he protects the Christians and Jews. You know that they'll be slaughtered or driven out of the country. If Assad goes, who is going to take his place? Which stooge will take his place? Who would it be? Who? Tell me who. Who's going to take over for Assad? He knows the country. He knows the players. He knows the territory. And he knows how to control those animals. And so, therefore, Russia finally said, enough is enough. He's about to fall. We can't let him fall. We have strategic and cultural interests in maintaining Assad. And they bring in the military right under our noses. Obama, while he was decimating the military here, Russia was building up the military there. While Obama, the uh, great social engineer, was remaking the military here, Russia was training its military there. And look at what's happened. Out of nowhere, Russia starts bombing and then says to America, get your planes out of the skies. And so far, Obama's not been seen today. Hiding. This is one of the greatest mysteries, actually one of the greatest shames for America in my lifetime. This is almost equivalent to George Bush hiding after 9-11, when Bush and Cheney went into hiding. Remember that? Do you remember how embarrassing that was? When they took, he was last seen Bush sitting on a child's seat in an elementary school somewhere when the, when the towers came down. And then they, 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 they hustled off Bush and Cheney into some hidden location. And you know who spoke? Hillary Clinton. I remember it. Look, I have a great memory for these things. She had the guts to speak. They were missing MIA. Now Obama's missing in action because he knows he doesn't know what to say. I saw his eyes, by the way. See, I look at eyes. After the meeting between Putin and, and Obama, remember the handshake? The famous handshake where Obama towered over Putin? Putin's not a tall man, by the way. Obama's eyes look like that of a frightened animal. If you look very carefully, at not of the still footage, but of the video footage, right after the handshake, Obama looked shaken. He looked terrified. No one knows what went on in that room. But now we see what went on in that room. He brought, probably told Obama, we're going to do what we're going to do. We don't care what you do. Take a walk. And that's what happened. And here we are. Okay, 855-407-282. You, the American people, if you could vote today, would you support or oppose today's airstrikes by Russia? Of course, you have no influence over the events of the world. You have no influence over your elections in America, let alone the events of the world. All you have is propaganda around the clock and corrupt politicians. WJR, can you disagree with my assessment? That's why I give you the floor. Go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Savage, thanks for having me. Yeah, I, uh, I think Russia is only using the uh, ISIS uh, uh, excuse um, in front of the U.N. because they know it would get worldwide acceptance uh, in the failure of uh, President Obama. Uh, to take care of this, so they just use that as a front. They just want to back up Assad. It's actually an economic advantage for them because they need oil from Iran, and so with Iran's newfound wealth, they're going to, with, based on the, uh, the treaty, um, they are going to uh, consolidate Iran in China and um, set up a permanent presence in the Middle East through Syria. But the United States has tried to cripple Russia with sanctions, and, and cripple its economy, and they've done a very good job of hurting Russia. Wouldn't you think it's in the interest of a nation to have a national leader who thinks about the nation and says, you know what, I need to save my people and my nation. So if it means siding with Assad, uh, despite what Obama wants me to do, I'll side with Assad. In other words, from their point of view, doesn't it make sense? Yeah, well, yeah, Putin uh, has had to answer to the oligarchs, uh, the oil companies, when uh, uh, Obama put the sanctions on him. Uh, Putin's had to answer, and that was a big, that was Obama's big spanking. He thought Putin was going to fall. Well, I, I, no, I, I disagree with you. I think you have that backwards. There are no oligarchs who answer, don't answer. To, you have it backwards. The oligarchs answer to Putin. Nobody gets anything in Russia unless it goes through Putin. It's different than you may think. 
and it's not much different than here. It's not much different than here. The oligarchs are given their power by Putin, and anyone who's opposed them is wound up in a prison cell. So I disagree with you on that point. And, uh, and Putin, Putin has never forgotten that, and he has uh, had Obama sized up uh, for the longest time. And this has been a, this is this has been a long strategized uh, maneuver, and he waited for the perfect time. All right. So, do you think that who, who do you think is a graver threat to the United States of America, ISIS or Russia? I believe it's ourselves, but if I had to choose between those two, um, I would say ISIS. With a competent well. president, I would say. I, uh, ISIS with an incompetent president, I would say it's a it's a tie. So you do support the bombing, Russia's bombing, then? Um, I I support it. I, if I was Putin, I would do the same thing. However, I think it's uh, um, in our interests. We have such a weak president that um, uh, I think there's no way this is going to turn out good for us. All right, a copy of Government Zero goes out to you. I want to look at something in Zero Immigration in my book, Government Zero. And I ask, why is the administration granting asylum mostly to Muslims from Syria, Somalia, Afghanistan, and, not, and Iraq, when a full-fledged Holocaust is being perpetrated against Christians? Second, how do we know that ISIS agents posing as refugees are not among the, those the administration has admitted and put on a fast track to citizenship, just as the FBI has warned? One of the subheads is leaving Christians to the wolves. The next subhead is the sleepers awaken. The next subhead is importing crime. The next subhead is importing disease. The next subhead is, well, you'll have to read it on your own. Importing socialism, amnesty for illegals. That is why you have a refugee crisis in Europe. It was caused by Hillary Clinton's failed policies, mainly the Arab Spring. And I want to go back for a moment to the enemy of my enemy is my friend. We, I thought it was an Arabic say, saying. It's not. It is actually much older. I just read this moments ago. It is from the 4th century BC in India, where the Indian Machiavelli wrote about the idea in the Sanskrit military book, the Athra Shastra. Athra Shastra. I'll have to ask for that at the next time I go get a, a curry. But off, I'm sorry. U.S. foreign policy has been guided by the enemy of my enemy for decades. Obama's not the first one to have used it. But is he really using it? Is Obama really using that strategy himself? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. How is he using that? He's tried to use ISIS which is maybe his enemy, I'm not so sure, as his friend because ISIS wants to take out Assad. So he's been using that strategy of the enemy of my enemy is my friend, so ISIS is an enemy of his enemy, Assad. So he figured let's support ISIS. Israel's used that strategy, pitting one side against the other. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So if it works for them, why shouldn't it work for us now and side with Russia against ISIS, because we really want ISIS out. I, who is a graver threat to this country right now? Let's put it another way. Is it ISIS or Assad? Let's make it really simple for the average Joe and Jane listening to the show. Who poses a graver threat to this country right now? Is it ISIS or is it Assad? Well, it has to be a simple answer. It's, it's ISIS. Look at what they've been doing. Look at what they've been doing. Now, many of you still don't agree with me. You will support Obama to your graves. You will think he's the most brilliant strategist in the history of the world. I have to disagree with you. Many of you oppose Putin because you're stuck in the Cold War mentality of Ronald Reagan. You're still living in the 1980s. To you, the Russians are the greatest threat. You haven't seen the evolution of Russia. You know nothing about Russia. You know nothing about Russian history. And you're stuck in the Reagan mentality of Russia must be, be forced to, to its knees. But the Soviet Union fell a long time ago. It's not the same Russia as that of the pre-wall era. How could you still be stuck in that mentality? Okay, I know many of you are. And I know many of you disagree with me. And that's what makes for conversation in uh, democracy, and especially on talk radio. WMAL, Sam, which side are you on? Go ahead, please. I think Vladimir Putin, I support him 100%. He, he, the reason he's doing what he's doing is because he understands history and culture. 
He's the capital of the Slavic world. The Slavic world extends down into Syria. He's been, Russia has been, like you just said, Russia's been involved in that area culturally, historically, for centuries. So the Chinese, you know, down the Silk Road. Those two powers, I think, are being very wise in their, you know, interaction in the... So, so do you agree with me that the United States really has no self-interest in the Syrian uh, civil war? Why are we there? What are we sticking our noses in it for? Yeah, because Obama's an idiotic globalist. Okay, but there's also another reason, which is that Obama's been led by Israel uh, in backing, uh, in, in, in trying to get rid of Assad. That's what I think. I agree with you on that, and that's because they don't understand. And, by, and I have to repeat again, I have to, I have to read the, again, I support Israel, but Israel's wrong for doing this. They've made the world a much more dangerous place by putting their self-interest above that of the, of the world itself. And, and that's the problem when you have a small nation that thinks it's bigger than it is, and wants to put its interests ahead of all interests in the world. And I do support Israel, but not in this case of uh, looking the other way while ISIS rapes and pillages uh, and destroys its way across the Middle East. Stay on the line. I'll send you a free copy of my great new book, Government Zero. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It is a fact that Lurch, the Secretary of State, is now speaking at the U.N. along with uh, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov trying to make nice of a very bad situation for the United States, where the thin man is not seen anywhere because he's been trumped by, sorry to use that word, trumped by Obama. That's a hard use of two words right there. But uh, the thin man was trumped by Obama in, with the airstrikes. And there's another, another factor to this pi picture that you should look at before you jump to the naive conclusion that... Uh, the Russians are only bombing the Free Syrian Army. They will not take out ISIS. The Russian lawmakers voted unanimously today to let Putin send Russian troops to Syria. Do you understand what that means? Do you know how big this is? Now you understand why Putin is bombing the Free Syrian Army? Because unlike Obama, he actually cares about his troops. And he wants the Free Syrian Army off the ground before he puts them on the ground to annihilate ISIS, do you understand the strategy? You're following hook, line, and sinker what the naive people in the media are saying, the Barber Stars, the Stalinists at the New York Times. Oh, Putin's not really going to take out ISIS. He's just taking out the good guys in the Free Syrian Army. Well, first of all, there are no good guys. That's number one. Second of all, if his grand strategy is to put Russian troops on the ground, which is what it obviously is, first you get the guys off the ground who can harm your troops. And that's why he's bombing their command and control centers, their ammunition dumps. He cares about his military. He doesn't want to put them in harm's way to any greater extent than he's already going to do so. So he is playing a war game the proper way. But of course, if you just follow the news girls, you, you don't know what he's doing. Oh, he's bombing the free Syrian army. He's not bombing ISIS. He wants, you want him to do it the first day? So I will stake my bet and I hope I'm right, that he will take out ISIS because Iran wants ISIS gone and their allies. And that's why Putin is taking out the Free Syrian Army today. All the boys and girls with tight dungarees and iPhones in their back pockets. But don't be taken in by their outfits because behind them lurks ISIS. This is the Savage Nation. Read Government Zero and you'll find out what's going to happen next.